the ridiculous Pakistani government has asked Facebook to give it information on those who have committed blasphemy in Pakistan or even abroad so that they can have them extradited. And the very fact that Facebook is even not saying that this is a ridiculous joke and even contemplating the possibility of discussing this issue with the Pakistani government is outrageous, to and, say the least. And we've had this demand from various reactionary um, governments, uh, in particular from Middle East and Asia. We've had China restricting uh, mm. freedom of um, expression on the net. We've had Islamic Republic of Iran from yeah. its inception has been trying to masculate freedom of expression mm. on the net and stopping um, and actually not giving license to cert mm. certain social media uh, networks. But people have gone beyond this. But the outrageous thing is that the Pakistani government dares publicly to talk about blasphemy, mm. dares publicly to talk about the, f the fact that people criticizing Islam and Islamists on the net, it's a crime. Um, and um, is roping in um, Facebook but, and social But also media it just shows how much the Islamist narrative has become normalized. You've got the BBC Asian Network, for example, discussing this issue. And their question is, what is the punishment for blasphemy? There's this underlying assumption that there needs to be a punishment because people's sentiments and, uh, you know, um, ideas have been so harmed that it's contemplatable that there should be a sort of punishment and that in of itself is the problem and we've seen Facebook has collaborated on and on and on with repressive groups you know the censorship of atheist uh, Arab atheist uh, sites for example Indian atheists you've got Iranian atheists you've seen Facebook do this on and on and on many times the Council of Ex-Muslims and the work that we've done has been censored, including by Twitter. You know, and you think it's it's yeah, become yeah. normalized yeah, to absolutely. a ridiculous if extent. You allow them, if you allow them actually to normalize the most oppressive and reactionary views, uh, BBC Asian Network had to back off and apologize under pressure yeah. and protest and objection by uh, many people on the on, on Twitter and social media. And that's a, that's a great achievement. But that is not. This is not going to go away. This is a fight that must be won against the Pakistani government, against Facebook and social media organisations. Yeah. No censorship. There are attempts internationally to um, find various people. Or oh, these fake news. It's all of this. Of course, let's deal with that openly. Expose them. This is an opportunity to expose the Pakistani government. It's in complicit yeah. activity with the Islamist. Um, you expose Facebook and social media organizations things, to actually trying to, yeah. you know, trying to normalize yeah. the situation. But also, I mean, I think what the very quick apology of BBC Asia Network showed is that it is possible to organize against these attempts at imposing blasphemy rules by making a big stink about it. I mean, just as BBC Asia Network was doing this, there's a 31-year-old Indian rationalist, H. Farooq, who was murdered because of his atheism, because of his rationalism and what he said on social media. So the Blasphemy laws have real consequences. It means that people can be killed in a place like Pakistan, in a place like Iran. It means that mobs, even in a country like India, which may not have blasphemy laws to that extent, can be just murdered on the street. Or you've got people being threatened here in Europe for the same reason. So it's really important to say no. Blasphemy is not a crime. It's a basic right. And the reality is that there is a huge demand for freedom of expression. Young generation are discussing various issues on a social uh, network and social media. And this is what they're scared of. Mm -hmm. The reactionary governments and the organization, Islamist and religious right, they're all are scared of this corruption, phenomenon. Corruption, corruption. Yeah, they're constantly talking about this. That's yeah. the only way they have. This mm -hmm. actually shows that the strength and the extent and the growth of the young generation who want to freely discuss um, ideas, science, art, you know, social um, ills yeah. and issues, it's so great that they are trying to uh, this is the last bastion for yeah. them actually to, yeah. to, to come and attack and we need to protect it and it's right for us to condemn uh, as we did uh, Asian BBC Asian Network and any other organisation and government who tried to limit freedom of expression. Mm -hmm.